See, the enemy has declared war against us. Why do you say that, Pastor Dawes? Because if he can't get to God, he's going to go after who God loves. And we read in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I think about it from a natural standpoint. If you can't get to me, if you want to get to my heart, come after my children. But if you come after my children, you also coming after me. Hello everyone, my name is Richard Dobbs, our pastor of Overcomers Christian Center. Before going to the message, let me take a moment to thank all of you who have who continue to support our ministry, whether in the past, in the present, or in the future. Because remember, giving is changing our living. And the seeds that you sow are going into good ground and gonna produce a wonderful harvest for your return. Today, I wanna to come to you from the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verses seven through nine, which reads as follows. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Based on that, I wanna to talk to you from this topic, the war we must win. The war we must win. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful for your word today. Thank you for allowing us to hear and understand and put your word into action. We bind the enemy right now that will try to hinder or stop with this, what the Spirit of God wants to reveal to us today. And Father, we pray, Father, that you will minister knowledge and understanding of the scriptures so in turn we can receive this word, apply it in our everyday life, and get the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And yes, and we do thank you for everyone who's watching who has who receives this word today i thank you for him and we love you for him in jesus name we pray amen and thank you lord paul uses the term oh, excuse me the writer uses the book of john in the book of john revelation revelation of john he uses the word war and wartime is a time where it's cruel it's vicious Sometimes we can hear the word, word war so many times and we downplay how significant of a word that is. When somebody's in war, there's somebody going to get sometimes get hurt. People are going to lose their lives, their homes and so many other cruel things that go on when it comes to war. Wartime suggests that a war is being fought. War meaning a conflict or combat between two or more opposing forces on a certain battleground. The battleground is where the war of fighting occurs. When we think about war, there is usually an enemy trying to advance onto someone's territory and the opposing party is trying to stop them from advancing. And if history is any indication of future events, this type of behavior will continue. See, war started back in the book of Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Notice this, heaven had a war. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. I love this particular scripture because God didn't even move. He sent Michael and his angels to fight against the dragon and his angels. They fought. The dragon wanted to take over heaven and and Michael wasn't having it. He said, hey, no, mm -mm, you're not having this here. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. Can you think about this? He's trying to take over heaven and he could not prevail. So God, Michael and his angels cast him out of heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast 
to the earth. That's right. The earth that we live on right now, he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. See, the enemy has declared war against us. Why do you say that, Pastor Dawes? Because if he can't get to God, he's going to go after who God loves. And we read in John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And now think about it from a natural standpoint. If you can't get to me, if you want to get to my heart, come after my children. But if you come after my children, you're also coming after me. And I believe that's how God looks at it when he, uh, when the enemy comes after a child of God. Listen, I, I love the fact that God fights our battles and he helps us to win. He shows us how to win and he empowers and equips us to win. And since he can't get to God, he's going to try to come after his child. So we're in a war. And as believers, one of the uh, greatest battlegrounds is our mind. It's where we make our decisions. It's where we have our perceptions and how we uh, our thinking takes place. And see, our mind gives us the capacity to think, make decisions, and helps us to make sense out of the things around us. And see, the mind is a place that processes information and stores memories. And because our minds are the seat of our emotions, our memories, and so forth, where we process and understand information, sometimes it can become vulnerable to the attacks from things from our past, our present, and our future. And see, one thing I know about the devil and Satan, he's not going to fight you fair. He will use something from your past. He use something from your future. Even events that have not even taken place yet, he will have you thinking about those things, have you worrying about those things, have you, listen, pondering about those things, and they haven't even taken place yet. And let me say this to you, I've fallen trap, I've fallen for those traps in my own personal life. I become vulnerable. And if vulnerable says this, I'm easily hurt, harmed, or influenced. And our mind is a battleground for the enemy to bring about doubt, fear, chaos, and confusion, which is a strategy of the enemy. In our minds where we deal and we're bom and the enemy will try to bombard us with thoughts of pain, disappointment, rejection, insecurities, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, and so forth. And see, he's dropping what I consider bombs on or missiles against our minds. He'll send thoughts of rejection, thoughts of insecurities, thoughts of unforgiveness, thoughts of bitterness, thoughts of bitterness and betrayal and so forth. Sometimes you have all types of thoughts coming at your mind all at the same time. That's a sign that the enemy is after you. But he's, if, if he's after you, understand God is greater than the enemy. Mm. It's our mind where the Holy Spirit and God's written and revealed word can train us how to think, how to talk, how to have the right thoughts and the right mindset and the right attitude when it comes to our life. Philippians 4 and 8 is a good anti attack against the enemy. See, Philippians 4 and 8 provides us how we should think, how we should judge matters, how our inward thoughts should uh, be. Philippians 4 and 8 reads as follows. Finally, brethren, whatever things are pure, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate. Think about, reason inwardly, make decisions on these things. And see, when we're thinking about what God wants us to think about, it gives us the victory. And see, this war, we got to win. Our minds is at stake. Our loved ones are at stake. We've got to win this particular war. Let's continue to grow in our knowledge and understanding of a Christ-minded church. You know that Paul was talking to the called out believers in the faith at the church at Philippi. He gives us another example of how we can overcome the enemy. He says in Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, let this thinking, let this wisdom, let this insight have the same values as Christ, the anointed one, the redeemer, the one who, who kicked out 
uh, Satan from heaven. Have that mind in you. When you have that mind in you, you're going to win. You're going to win when the enemy sends thoughts at you. He gonna, you're going to win when the enemy tried to bombard you with thoughts of unforgiveness and fear and anxiety and anger and jealousy and so forth. You're going to win this battle because why? You got the mind of Christ. And when you got the mind of Christ, you are going to win. And we can conclude there are other mindsets that are available to us. We don't want the mindset of the world. We want the mind of Christ. Yeah, we can have the mind of social media influencers. We can have the mind of, of our friends and loved ones and co-workers. But if they do not have the mind of Christ, that would not give us the victory that God wants us to have. And as believers, we're constantly in a battle in our thinking, talking, and reasoning. For example, there's good versus evil. I'm talking about godly good, godly good versus godly evil. I mean, excuse me, godly good versus the demons or the devil's evil. There's faith versus fear, prosperity versus poverty, healing versus sickness, forgiveness versus unforgiveness. Love versus hate, grace and mercy versus judgment and punishment. See, there's always a war going on. And I've been saved for a number of years now. And I sense and I understand that this war is a constant thing going on. That's why we need to renew our minds with the word of God. And the word gives us the victory over the enemy. I like what uh, he's, the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But you got to let God be great in you. You got to let God be great in you. You got to let God be great in your thinking and your decision making. You, you must in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. When you're fighting against the enemy, listen, God has given us the power. He's given us the instructions. He's given us the, the love. He's given us the faith in order to win. But this is a war that we must win. It's wartime and we're going to win. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, for giving us the victory. We know that there's many challenges out there that come against us. But, Father, we thank you, Father, for giving us strategies, giving us insight, giving us an understanding of how we can win. And Father, we thank you, God, for the victories we've had in the past, the victories we have today, and the victories we'll have in the future. It's so imperative that we understand that power is in your word. The love Love is in your word. Faith is in your word. Strength and power is in your word. Help us to operate in it. When we get the news of different things going on around us, when we see what's happening on television, help us to operate in the word that works mightily in our lives. We love you today, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for allowing us to come to wherever you are to share the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're ever in the Villaroca area, come see us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. We'd love to have you as a part of our service. Well, until next time, remember, without a vision, the people perish.